Last month, I made a game using libgdx for the libgdx game jam. Yeah, it's pretty much just a Flappy Bird clone. So to make things interesting, instead of making a video on how I made this game, I thought I could try to make an actual Flappy Bird clone for the Nintendo DS using C++ and LibNDS. So I started off by installing DevKit Pro and tried compiling the LibNDS examples just to make sure everything was set up correctly. Then I created an empty C++ script and copied the make file from one of the examples. Usually, before I add art to any of my games, I like to prototype the gameplay first using basic shapes. So I looked through LibNDS's documentation to see if there was any way to draw primitives to the screen. But I couldn't find anything. So I resorted to Google and came across a forum post where someone linked a DS library called libgl2d. The link didn't work, probably because I'm trying to make a game for a 15 year old console. But luckily someone archived the lib on GitHub and I was able to get it from there. LibGL2D takes advantage of the DS's 3D core to improve 2D rendering. It allows you to do a lot of cool things with sprites that aren't normally possible. Most importantly, it has a function called GLBoxFill that lets you draw rectangles to the screen, so I can use it to easily make a prototype of Flappy Bird. The actual game logic of Flappy Bird is pretty simple. The first thing I did was draw this nice looking bird to the screen in a while loop. I set its X position to about one third of the screen width, and its Y position to a float I call bird pause Y. Then I create another float called bird speed and add bird speed to the bird's position every frame. And just like in real life, I add a fixed amount to bird speed every frame which acts as the acceleration of gravity. So now the bird falls in a pretty realistic way. Then when any button is pressed, I set the velocity of the bird to a negative fixed amount. This isn't how flapping works in real life, but this is how it works in Flappy Bird and it's probably why the game is so hard. The other major component of Flappy Bird is obviously the pipes that move across the screen. Instead of spawning and despawning pipes, I just use four sets of sprites that move across the screen and once they move off screen, they loop back to the beginning. So I start off by creating a class called Pipe. For now I only put two variables inside of this class, pause x and pause y. Then I create an array of four pipes called ground pipes. I use a for loop to set the x position of each pipe to i, which is the pipe's position in the array, so 0, 1, 2, or 3, multiplied by a constant that determines how spread out the pipes will be. Then I add 256, the width of the DS's screen, to that, so that the pipes will move in from off the screen when the game starts. And then I set the Y position of each pipe to a random integer between a maximum and a minimum height. But Flappy Bird wouldn't be that hard if there were only pipes coming from the ground. So I created another array from the pipe class called Ceiling Pipes. In the same for loop I set the initial X position of each ceiling pipe to the X position of the corresponding ground pipe and the Y position to the ground pipe Y position subtracted by a number that represents the gap between the two pipes. Since all the pipes are spawned with a correct distance between them, moving them across the screen is really straightforward. Inside the main while loop, I use another for loop that first draws each pipe to the screen, then subtracts a fixed speed from the X position of each ground and ceiling pipe every frame. And once a ground pipe's X position plus its width goes below zero, the X position of the ground pipe and its corresponding ceiling pipe are set back to 256. And now we more or less have an ugly looking Flappy Bird clone running on the DS. I waited until after I added sprites before implementing things like score and collisions. Programming basic game logic is fun and all, but when writing code for the DS, it'll probably also be the least challenging part. So yeah, displaying sprites on the DS requires a pretty good understanding of how the DS manages memory. Graphics displayed on the DS have to be stored in video RAM, which is divided into multiple VRAM banks that each- Yeah, there's no need to actually worry about any of this, because we can just use a wrapper to handle all of this for us. I could keep using libgl2d, but for some reason the examples I compiled that use sprites weren't displaying the sprites at all. It also has other limitations like not being able to use the bottom screen, so I figured I'd be better off using another library anyway. 
There are a few different sprite drawing libraries to choose from, but the one I like most is Nightfox Lib. It doesn't really have any unnecessary extra features like some other libs I came across. It just lets you draw and delete sprites and backgrounds. It also has functions for playing sound effects, which will definitely come in handy. So I spent some time in GIMP reorganizing the sprites and converting them into a format that could be used by the DS. And after some failures, I reworked my prototype to use sprites instead of basic shapes. With Nightfoxlib, you just have to load a sprite in its color palette into a RAM slot, then load it into a VRAM slot, and then you can draw it just as easily as you can draw shapes with LibGL2D. And with all that tedious stuff out of the way, I could finally go back to working on the actual game. Nightfoxlib has a sprite rotation function, so I set the bird sprite's rotation to the bird speed float to make the bird point in the direction of its velocity. This is also when I tweak some values like gravity, the bird flap magnitude, and the pipe gap to make the game feel more like Flappy Bird. To do this, I compared screenshots of my game to screenshots of Flappy Bird, and also referenced two helpful graphs made by Frank Noskazy of the bird's Y position and velocity over time. I'll put the link to his article on Flappy Bird physics in the description if you want to check it out. For a collision, I just used a simple if statement with four conditionals to check if the bird is inside of any pipe, and I gave the bird its flapping animation by just updating its sprite every few frames. And for the score, I just add 1 to an integer each time the center of a pipe equals the X position of the bird. After that, I worked on some of the finer details of the game. I implemented things like the score results screen that gives you certain medals for certain scores, a title screen, and a get ready screen. I also randomly choose a bird color and background each time you reset the game. I also added all the sound effects from the original game, which was pretty easy to do with Nightfox Lib. And with that, I had a pretty decent Flappy Bird clone running on the DS with just about every feature the actual mobile game has. If you want to try it out, you can get the game on my itch.io page. If you have any additional questions about how the game was made that I didn't cover in this video, feel free to leave a comment or ask me on Discord or Twitter. If you want to see more DS programming related videos, maybe even tutorials, let me know in the comments because I think that would be a lot of fun. And as always, if you have any feedback or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoy playing this port of a 6 year old game to a 15 year old handheld.